And and uh, going into Star Trek, we seen before. do you um, think that, no, could you imagine ever being a part of a franchise this big, big when like you got into acting? Uh, no, but you know, I watched it when I, was, when I was a kid. I did my third play as a professional actor with Leonard Nimoy, so Leonard is like a friend and an inspiration. And um, But I never thought I'd be part of it, and I love J.J.'s first film of it, the, you know, the reboot of this franchise, but the amazing thing is I was giving part of my PhD at UCLA and on the day that this opened. So I had to go from a really serious academic situation, get in a limousine, and go open the movie. Now, I've been on a lot of red carpets, and Cherry's on a lot of red carpets with me, but all of Hollywood Boulevard, as far as you can see, with helicopters and grandstands. But he was I, talking about ancient history going into promoting the that's future. Right. Yeah. That's right. I, oh, that's amazing. I was, wasn't I? I was talking, I never got that. I was, talking, I was giving a lecture on ancient history, and I walked right into future history. So, I, when I saw it, and Paramount representative said, Peter, it's a franchise. There are people younger than you and older than you. There are people five years old, people 85 years old. Watching this, I, I realized that this is in perpetuity, the Roddenberry's creation, which I think is truly infused by Homer's odyssey, that, that, that look for, searching for actually home and sanctity and love, although he has to war on the thing, on the barriers that keep him from it. I think that's infused with Homer's odyssey a lot, but that's why Roddenberry's spectacular creation lasts forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever, and ever. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think about the the next the next the third one? The third one? Yeah. What do you think that? Uh, where would you like it to go? <laughs> Gosh. He's standing Gosh. over there. Well, Spock has to get married. Okay. <laughs> Spock has to get married. Zach and Zoe have to get married for sure. Yeah. I and think they have to get married. They have to get married. <laughs> uh, I think it has to go into some realm of <laughs> the human part of it, middle age. Right. You know, adulthood. No longer the young adventurer. But like the mature adventurer, almost like where Bruce Greenwood's character or Marcus. You know, had Marcus not conceived such a, you know, an extreme notion. But those guys had to deal with particular interplanetary politics. Look, the movie is, and also, Gene Roddenberry was political. There's political stuff in Star Trek. It's not just like, whoops, you do fantasy, and let's go look at space and see what happens. There is statements about aggression and diplomacy in Star Trek, and so that's got to be in the next one, too. All right, thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Hi. <laughs> to go after him. I cannot allow you to do this. Jim, you're not actually going after this guy, are you? Let's go get this son of a bitch. You are a poem, Kirk. Sir, there's a ship heading right for us. You can't even guarantee the safety of your own crew. Now, shall we begin? Sorry. We're outnumbered. Outgunned. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I only know what I can do. The ship's dead, sir. She's gone. 
she's not. No ship should go down without her captain. I believe in you, Jim.